making your way in the world today you really need a pod why don't you put your headphones in and give this one a shot wouldn't you like to just listen away and go to a place where everybody knows who you are listen to two guys brew ha ha cold street brewery and full buddy cast two of the greatest names why don't you go and listen to this episode all right, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of Brew Ha Ha, brought to you by Cole Street Brewery in Enumclaw, Washington, 1627 Cole Street. Come on down. Say hi to Sean. As everything is starting to open up, you you may see that, uh, who knows, is the other the other spot may open for a bit or maybe... Yeah, the other spot's going to open for the summer for sure. Excellent. Got the nice outdoor seating. You know, I've got some nice turf, so it's, uh, you know, it kind of looks like a backyard. And then you got the great view of the mountain. Ooh, Come yeah. out and hang out. Oh, yeah. Some nice, you know, lawn lawn games and lawn furniture to hang out with. And they're shutting down on Colster. They're shutting down that every weekend, right? Every weekend. Friday, from Saturday. Friday, 2 o'clock till Sunday, 7 o'clock. So you walk around like my wife calls Downtown. it Enum Claus Vegas. Just so to be clear, just, those are two different two different areas. Two I different guess. areas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, wear your Full Buddy Cat shirt. Full Buddy Cat? <laughs> maybe up, maybe cat? we'll do, we do a feline uh, <laughs> a podcast at some point. But Full Buddy Cat shirt, get 15% off. Uh, go take a picture. If you don't have a shirt, go take a picture in front of one of his uh, Cole Street Brew uh, portraits and you get 10% off and take yourself in, get 10% off there. And uh, every once in a while, you know, we get beer nerdy. We talk about survival stories with Sean. We talk about maybe his rant or beer of the week. Uh, right now, though, we brought on a guest. So, Sean, would you mind introducing our guest? I, I would love to. I brought up uh, John from John's Home Brew Supply uh, down in Puyallup, uh, you know, I started as a home brewer. He's a great home brewer, and then he uh, took it one step level, one one level higher than you know, and started his own shop. Kind of the same thing that I did, you know, just in a different direction. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we've been friends for I don't know, but five six years now, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's his voice. <coughs> that's his voice. So John, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome to Brew yeah. Ha John from John's Home Brew Supply. I often tell people when they get started brewing, say. Be careful, you might find yourself 25 years down the line having to start your own <laughs> store to support your habit. Yeah, for sure. Is yeah. that how you started yours? Like, to, wanna, let's go into the origin on it and everything. Like, what, what, well, let's start, let's start with the background. What's your background in everything? In everything. Yeah, yeah. Where'd, where'd, you you grow, come, where'd you come from? Where'd you come where, from? Where'd you, where'd you grow up and all that? Let's get into that. Uh, born and raised in Seattle, so I'm a, a Northwest guy. Okay. Uh, I worked in music stores most of my life. Okay. So I'm a musician also outside of all this. And, yeah, yeah. I've listened uh, to your stuff. Spent 27 years working in music stores and uh, doing school band stuff primarily, but that's what really helped me learn how to run a store. Nice. And uh, eight or nine years ago, something like that, my company got sold and kind of decided I was just burned out on it, left that and played music for a little while. And of course, that means my savings went down <laughs> yeah. quickly. It's fun. <laughs> it's not money. Yeah. But I was brewing. All the time. Uh, I started home brewing in 1997. Awesome. So that's uh, like 24 years. Took a, a home brewing lesson from Larry Reifenberg. I lived up, to, up oh, the hill from Larry's Brewing Supply. Down in Larry Brewery. Which, yeah, I don't in know, Kent. Yeah. I think we might have met there. If, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think probably, that's where we met. Like going to the, uh, uh, what are the, Impaler, Impalers meetings and stuff. Did you, uh, were you a member of their club or no? I wasn't until I started working for Larry's. Uh, after they moved up to the Tequila location. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, then I joined the Aylers and yeah, and was there. So uh, I took a brewing lesson from Larry because I lived right up the hill, and that really got me fired up. Uh, years sure. before that, my uncle used to brew back in the seventies, and it always set a little yeah. spark in my head that love Larry. I, thought it was I mean, he's cool. he's an amazing dude too. Yeah, he, he had so much love and beer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and and this whole family, it was very much a family thing. And for sure, yeah, everybody that worked there was a family member. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until I started. They always wow. told me the only way you can get in is to, to marry somebody. Yeah, right. And I was all married, so that was going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> second wife, second wife. <laughs> so and I was brewing all the time while I was on a hiatus from the, the previous life. And uh, at some point, I decided I was going to need to do something. And I wanted to do something that was passionate to me. So it was, I was going to go work in a brewery, uh, yeah. but had to stop after I got my resumes printed and 
buy some supplies to brew at home and, and they told me they had just posted they were going to hire somebody and so yeah so i started working there mm-hmm. yeah and did that for a couple of years but it's a long commute up to tukwila and i got tired of sitting in traffic and i just decided there was a big hole between there's definitely a void tukwila and, and Tacoma. lakewood which is where yeah. the next closest was yeah. and i always wish there was Central. a store in puyallup yeah. and uh, wanted to work close to home and that nice. kind of is what got me started there and, you go yeah nice yeah so it didn't seem like there was like uh, I mean yes there's always those calculated risks and you're jumping from one thing thinking about the next move kind of a thing but it seemed kind of was it pretty smooth flowing for you were you like did you feel like you were taking any gambles or risks with anything you know yeah I mean that's there was both sides of it I felt like I knew what to do because mm-hmm. I'd worked in stores my whole life uh, working at Larry's really helped me learn the the supply chain who yes. to order stuff from. You know, and uh, and what the what the desire is like. Uh, so that that's kind of what leads into some of the questions that I have for you is like, uh, you know, when a a brand new brewer comes in, like, where do you direct them? You know, I know that Larry's had like a little file of different, you know, stuff. Like, yeah, h- how do you how do you navigate like somebody that's brand new? Like, do you, you know, obviously extract, but yeah, I mean, how usually do you navigate start them on extract. To, although the, some of that's changing a little bit too. But I actually have those exact same blue boxes that Larry's had the the nice recipes all in yeah those same exact boxes <laughs> so uh that's usually where we'd start is looking at recipes or a lot of times people have an idea of a recipe they want to do but like mac um, and jacks african amber and they're like yeah yeah show that, me how to do it or manny's or actually <laughs> yeah. i have my own uh, john's pale ale is probably the most popular one because it's easy to brew nice uh it's a good one to get started with and enough complexity that it's a real beer but not so much that it's too challenging to drink so kind of good middle of the road and easy to brew yeah, obviously, you know, you training wheels, put them on, get them kind of rolling down the road and get them excited about it, you know? Yeah. You don't want to yeah. fail on your first one. That's right, yeah. <laughs> you can fail down the road when you start trying to do your own stuff, you know? Exactly, yeah, make too many changes and stuff. Or... Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely see that sometimes. But for the most part, doing an easy beer that doesn't require too much extra special stuff and learn how to ferment. That's always what I tell people in the beginning is brew for something sure. easy and and learn how the fermentation process works because that's really the key to making good beer. Yeah. Well, speaking mm-hmm. of good beer, we're about almost seven minutes in, and I'd oh, like man. to taste. My, my taste glass one. is still kind of empty. <laughs> <laughs> so we so, asked we asked John to bring up some of his. Uh, and so obviously, John owns a home brew supply shop because he needed to supply himself with all the ingredients to make home brew. Uh, so we asked him to bring up some of his great beer. He's pouring it right now. Yeah, what one are we? Good. What one are we? Uh, I should have held this up to the microphone and hear that. I'll, I'll do it while you tell us about it. Looks, it. <laughs> it looks golden, golden and delicious. So it's a Belgian wit. Uh, I figured it's a good one to start with because it's pretty easy drinking beer. Yep, it's a good summertime beer. Uh, pretty low alcohol, but uh, so the wit. It's a it's primarily wheat is a big part of it. Uh, and wit is a Belgian beer, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Uh, it has orange peel and coriander, but not real strong. Um, it's called Shabby Wit. Uh, a lot of my, my recipes in the store have Shabby in the name. It's because as part of being a musician, I've had a, a recording studio in my house, and the kind of pretend name of my pretend recording studio is Shabby Road. <laughs> That's County. pretty sweet. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> there you go. A joke on, the, on Abbey Road. Abbey Road, Road. Yeah, yeah, Shabby Road. Nice. Uh, and so when, uh, when I started doing needing names for my home brewery, we were trying to think of stuff and yeah. kind of with my kids, one of my kids said, well, why don't you just call it Shabby Road Brewing? And it's like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Right like it clicked. Yeah. Like, so yeah. that's where the Shabby in, in a lot of my recipe names are. It's so great, it's great light beer. Yeah. So what's the ABV and all that other fun stuff uh, to this one? I want to say it's about 5%. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, if I was real smart, I would have had the recipe yeah, right here. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's about 5%. Give or uh, take. Sure. Mostly Pilsner malt, uh, Pilsner malt, wheat, flaked wheat, um, pretty light on hops. I think it's, I think it's Hallertau. Uh, oh, nice. I use gold, steering goldings yeah. in a lot of my German beers or uh, my Belgian beers. Yeah. Uh, Imperial yeast. So that way it balances out the sugar, but it doesn't really give a whole lot of like uh, leftover bitterness to it. Yeah. Yeah, Keeps exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like I said, it little... doesn't clatter it up, too. It's nice and crystal clear. I'm almost surprised it's as clear as it is with the amount of wheat that's in it. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, I don't know. I, I get a little bit of, there's no corn in this. I get no. a little bit of the corn on there, too. No. But... 
Yeah, it's delicious. So, uh, well, while we... Yeah, uh, I like this. Yeah, for sure. So, I'm going to ask some dumb questions, okay? Because <laughs> okay. that's the Perfect. Thing. That's what I do all the time. I ask Perfect. Sean, he brings the ha-ha. I, well, I, br- I bring the brew. He brings the I'm ha-ha. I'm bringing in the dumb dumb. I see. Um, so, <clears throat> with that said, we're going to bounce around a little bit, too. Okay? Right. On. But if, <laughs> if I were to look up John's Home Brew and Wine Supply... What am I expecting to see on whether the web page or Facebook or Instagram? What am I seeing? A lot of ingredients. Um, so I've got a my website is primarily informational. Okay. Um, front page it, it t- talks about what's going on at the store, like the last year or so. It's been our COVID policies. And sure. What we're doing with regards to that. Also have stuff about competitions that are going on. Okay. That's always on the front page. Um. Other pages are lists of ingredients. I've got a lot of my recipes on there. Um, so you, contact information. So you got a lot of information out yeah. there. So if I'm, you know, so I guess my <clears throat> next question then is, are you a brewery? Are you, like, can I take course lessons from you? Like, is there oh, courses yeah. that I can download? Is there things that, that like, do I yeah. order from you ingredients? Like, what Like, what am I, or even uh, brewing? Uh, if I walk in there, you walk yeah. me through, like, yeah, the what's, process. What do I do? Do? You, do you have classes, too? I mean. Yeah, I'm not doing classes right now. Um, okay. I don't really have a space to do it. Okay. Uh, but I love doing classes. When I was at Larry's, I taught the brewing class there every Saturday. Nice. And uh, I still see people that that came to the class so nice uh, all That's... the way back then so that was kind of cool um i had just started i was supposed to do my first lesson april of last year i had set up with uh <laughs> off camber brewing down at puyall to, and to then be able COVID. to do it at his place yeah, yeah. and then uh end up canceling i oh. really hope to get back to that so i'm hoping by the end of summer at least to so do you're gonna do like off classes. off campus classes at, at, at a little uh, at a different uh, brewery spot exactly yeah. yeah the only reason i laugh is because i feel like i've talked to very a lot of people that that were all like set up ready to do this <coughs> new thing like in yeah. Mar- february march april and, and then, then it just wasn't able to happen. Stupid COVID. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And still have COVID. I do have stuff I have a YouTube on. page also okay. that has some uh, instructional oh, stuff. So I actually did a lesson that's awesome. a what, year or so before that. What's the YouTube? Is it I, John's Home? John's Homebrew. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And it, you Didn't know that. link okay. to it through my website or just go straight there. Okay. But uh, there's a beginning how to brew video there that I did actually a year or so before just did a lesson in the back parking lot of the store <laughs> sure which i can't cool. do regular but we filmed it so that i could make a video out of it since it wasn't something i'm able to do awesome that's regular yeah, that's great and, right. and that's been a big help i've had people say <clears throat> when they brew in their first beer they have their laptop right next to stuff and just sort of work right Take through it steps. as if it was yeah, a lesson yeah. for sure and how long would that is that youtube video is it like just it's so 45 minutes 45 minutes hour. so very yeah. so it's edited down a bit yeah so it's got some information in there, and you might probably go in depth in some areas and talk about yeah. a little thing. The important it, it stuff. It basically yeah. is an edited down version of the class, which was about three hours long. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And I have another one I did more recently. There's a, a real common thing for homers right now are the all-in-one units where oh, yeah. it's a, a electric, almost like a brew in a bag, but a brew in a basket type yeah, thing. Yeah, Pika pico or whatever it's yeah a little That's... different from the pico brew more like the grain father was the first one okay and then uh i carry the mash and boil okay and uh and now now there's a whole bunch of different ones but Versus i did a, a video of a brew day on the mash and boil uh which was my first experience at editing video and stuff too my regular video guy was too busy oh so you and, you were learning the whole the whole thing I yeah was like, wow yeah a good friend of mine who's uh works for uh uh, television station yeah had done the editing for my first one but he was too busy at the beginning of covid doing yeah all Setting the extra people tv up. stuff yeah so. yeah and so, so did you what did you record it on uh, was it a camera was it your phone how did you re- or so uh that we did on a phone and an ipad yeah and then uh we used uh Oh, I don't remember the video program, but something he recommended to me. I'm <coughs> telling you, it's incredible. The cameras on, on phones nowadays, yeah. it's like you wouldn't even think about it. And, and it's like, oh, I got to buy this big gear thing. My brother does a lot of uh, 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 videos for art and stuff. And and uh, iPad works well. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. And it, we had one stationary one, and then my wife used walked around with the other one. So we had one kind of moving and one to get oh, in close. Nice. And get different angles. Back yeah. and, uh, and then that's where the... Clip art comes in, yeah. Put it in. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I edited in some uh, still photos and 
some music for my band, so I own the copyright. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. It was fun. It was a great experience. I hope to do it again. It was real time consuming, but yeah, um, and that's that's one of the questions I feel a lot of times is um, like, well, how do I learn how to do this? And for me, uh, I've always wanted to kind of bring that on at the brewery, like walking people through, but I don't necessarily like with my equipment, it's, it's a lot harder to just like, you know, uh, it's a big thing versus having yeah. the nice small equipment. This is more real to you versus real to me like i can show you on the big equipment but when you go home you put it into a five gallon five gallon pot rather than it's a little you different. know 100, <laughs> yeah. 100 gallon pot i mean that's right. you know and then volume a wise it plastic just looks bucket different. instead of yeah. a great big conical and yeah it's really cool for homebrewers though who are used to doing five gallon batches to be able to come to a brewery like yours and see that it's well, really yeah. the exact same process yeah. and then they can really yeah. Now all of a sudden, visualize exactly. What I've said that doing. a million times. It um, it was a big, uh, a big curve for me. Is uh, I used to brew, and then all my friends we get together on the weekend, drink my whole batch down. Then I move on to the professional side where I'm making 300 gallon batches, and I'm like, yeah, come on over this weekend. Let's try and drink me out of beer this weekend. You know, uh, and it it takes the the same exact amount of time. I mean, let, no, like you know, clean up and the, the grinding and the grains maybe a little bit longer, but the bre- the brewing process is the exact same. So yeah, it's just crazy uh, mind wise how that is. And that's where, uh, so for me, it's, it's more like the, more like the advanced brewing class, people that are already brewing at home sort of, you know, come out and, and check out what I'm doing. So then they can see that, you know, the, the level up is, yeah. you know, really not that different than where they're already at. They already know what they're doing. You know, it's just the the volume that they're doing is different. It's versus, pretty inspiring for home brewers to yeah. come and see. Yeah, for sure. To see that, and yeah. that's what I want to do is one hundred percent. You know, awesome. and I've always I've done that in the past where I have the homebrew competitions. <clears throat> you know, I used to do it like every three months. Uh, we kind of you know I got super busy with expanding, opening the second brewery, and then of course COVID hit in the middle of that. So then let's put that all on a whole hiatus. Yeah. But I would love to get back to that of. Uh, doing homebrew competitions where it's like come out um, and I've done different levels of that. Basically, you know, the first time we did it, we're like, Hey, just bring in your favorite beer that you make. But then it's, it's hard where somebody brings in a wit and somebody brings in an IPA <laughs> and you're like, that's good. And that's good. Like, how do you compare wh- wh- which one's better? It's I mean, apples you know, and oranges um, versus then the second time uh, we basically, we dictated the, the, well, the second time we we made all we ground all the grain and these are your ingredients. You can add ingredients to this, but this is your base ingredients. Oh, yeah, cool. And then uh, we made like basically a, a pale malt or a pale ale recipe, and then they could add anything to it. So add fruit to it or any tweaks that they wanted to to make it better. And that was that was great, but it was kind of still kind of ho hum, and not so many people really actually got into that. And then the third one that we did. Uh, and this is what we progressed from that point on is we just said, Hey, this is what we're going to do. And that one, we did like a Baltic Porter. We're like, Hey, do a Baltic Porter. You can take whatever angle you want, but it's just got to be kind of close to those, you know, those guidelines. Yeah. You know, whatever. That's a little and tougher that, one for homebrewers to do. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It just, takes a little bit, <clears throat> you know, it's a bigger gr- grist and all that. Yeah. And did you guys logger that? As- well, they did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They did. (laughs) uh, And so that's the other thing. So we put it out there uh, months in advance to make sure that everybody had time to do that. So did you homebrew before you started your brewery? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, of course did. (laughs) I I just I just recently repurchased back my uh, original homebrew uh, kit. So of course, like all homebrewers, we progress. Like I I bought this and started with this boil thing, and then it started burning out. So then I got the, the solid stainless steel kettle. And then, you know, progressed yeah. up and then I, I got kegs to, you know, uh, for my boil kettles and that sort of thing. And I, I had another really good friend that was like thinking about getting into brewing and becoming like a, a small brewery sort of thing. And I'm like, well, I have this in the back of my mind. I always wanted to have it as like a test kit where I just, you know, I can run small batches. Oh, yeah, your you pilot, know? pilot yeah. system. Um, but then at the same time, it's like sitting in my garage doing nothing. It's, it needed love. Like I put so much love into it <laughs> yeah. and need somebody else to just take it. And so they, they got it from me, but then uh, they ended up having it. They're moving now. They're moving out of state and they're like, hey, we have all this stuff and it's sitting here. You want it back? And so I took it back. And now I, I've just, uh, I put it on my wall down at the Courier building. Oh, um, cool. Kind of displaying it. 
more as like uh like these are the steps of the brewing system and and showing a representation of all the different steps right on so it's like bring it back bring bring it back around to the the home brew i often point out when people come in and they ask me you know can i make can i make good beer at home and i, I tell them every craft brewery the brewer started out as a home Absolutely. brewer. Absolutely. Exactly. You, you don't just you are jump right into now. making thousand gallon batches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come some more from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And do it and fall in love with it. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. That's the other thing. With your own, with your own brews that you've done, how yeah. many, esti- estimate how many brews oh, do you think that. you've done in yeah. your lifetime? That's a good question. Uh, from 97? I, Oof. Around four hundred. Uh, I, I some people hit track have them every single one numbered, and I yeah. I never did that, but I've saved. Are most we talking of my types of? Sheets. Are we talking about types of brews? No, no, that's every just, time they brewed. Every yep. time, all your batches, four hundred yeah, batches. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I counted a while back, and I was in like the three hundred and forty or three hundred and fifty. I went through all my old brewing logs, and yeah. I know there was four or five years before that where I didn't save them, and yeah, where and then, you just yeah. So I'm, I'm just doing it. Don't around care about anything. Yeah. So what was your craziest one that you can think of? That one that you're like, you know what? I am going to use some crazy ingredients on this one. And how did it turn out? Uh, wow. It might be the, the dark lager. The, the one that try. we're drinking later. <laughs> <laughs> the one that he brought. <laughs> uh, one, one thing that happens at the store sometimes is very rarely I'll mess up somebody's batch. And, of course, I'm going to fix it, make it right for them. But then I've got all this grain sitting around that like, what am I going to do with this? And so that leads to some pretty unusual combinations sure. and, and things. And so it's, well, it's free to use it and try it. So <laughs> that's always a, a big thing that I love to point out too, is like, uh, the bigger, the batch, the little mistake is not as big a mistake, but the smaller, the batch, the little mistake is a big mistake. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. then it starts right where you, uh, from the source. So like when you grind it, if you're, if you're not grinding it right, or you mixed up whatever your grist is and it wasn't right, that, that could really throw off your batch. Like you, you know, yeah. versus at my level, it's like, yeah, eh, it kind of all blends in. So I did a beer a couple of years ago where we had somebody placed an, an order and in the order was four ounces of, of roasted barley it was you know, not it's not quite a stout i think it was a darker beer and the person pulling it accidentally pulled four pounds of roasted barley <laughs> which <laughs> is a pretty That's huge a amount big difference. <laughs> and yeah. so, uh, so now i had this and it was ground along with the rest of the grains and mixed together so it wasn't like i could just have it separate and dole it out so it's like well what am i going to do with this and decided okay if i add 10 pounds of pale malt and add so you just some increase everything else to, to yeah, kind of catch up to try to catch yeah. up as close as i could and made a great big imperial stout and, and uh, it was really roasty uh i usually put a little more chocolate malt in my stouts than, than what this was so it was a little different and uh but i tell you it was fantastic after especially it's, after it sat a year or two and stuff so <laughs> happy accidents <laughs> yeah exactly happy accidents Ooh, that's a just good keep- uh just keep painting on. Yeah. That's Bob Ross. That's Bob Ross. That, yeah. That'd be a good uh, uh, tap name for one, a happy accident. In it, case it'd be a good sticker that I already have at the brewery. <laughs> oh, you already? <laughs> Maybe that's why I associated with it. I um, think I called it Mulligan Stout. So it was oh, I like chance. that. I <laughs> like that. Go. Mulligan <laughs> Stout. Um, well, let's talk as we get into the next one. Let's get into the next one a little bit. We'll, fin- we'll, we'll finish this up. I'd like to uh, to hear some of your music background because i know that it's nice to get to know someone in in their entirety well, i i feel yeah. like that that plays into beer very well too because i mean you're, it's music you're just you're you're going with the flow you're just moving on and just yeah. like you said like you ended up with like leftover ingredients and you just took that and ran with it i mean i feel like music can be kind of the same way yeah I mean, it's kind of all art to yeah. me mm-hmm. yeah. i mean i was an art major in college mm. also i was a photography major and uh, you like to create make money as a photographer, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, musically I grew up, uh, loving heavy metal. Mm-hmm. I played in heavy metal bands through the eighties and who are your favorite bands real quick that you, when you're growing up, who was your favorite band? Top three. Uh, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden. Nice. Uh, Ooh, we can't choose the third uh, yeah, one. Yeah, the third one's tough. Choose the you know, third one. The Metallica Rushmore. Slayer, a lot of those there were real, real okay. popular, uh, but, but really, Sabbath and Iron Maiden, 
were were huge for me at that time. Yeah. Did you have the Did you have the full long hair and the uh, Did you full yeah. heavy metal? Yeah. 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 I'm, a, I'm a little different <laughs> now. But, yeah. A little different. I had the flowing hair. <laughs> you just head banged them right off. But yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was the time, and so, uh, but kind of I kept playing in bands. I don't play quite the heavier stuff anymore. Mm-hmm. Just kind of staying with what moves me emotionally, kind of. Yeah. Uh, but these days I've, I've been in band, my band's called Author Unknown. I have two different versions of the same band. Author Unknown is the cover working band. And then we have an original band that's called Buckets of Rain. That's, uh, same two guys in that band plus one other person. Nice. And that's the original band. We have two different names. So we know if we can expect to get paid or not. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been playing with those guys? We've been, uh, be 20 years this year. Wow. So kind of yeah. lucky to found yeah. people that. We can hang with good good musicians, and uh, lucky that they have had me with them. Yeah, <laughs> you slap it, you, you slap at the bass. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> Are you the ba- you're the bass player? I play then? bass. Yeah, you play yeah. bass, and and uh, what is it about the bass that that kind of drew you to wanting to play bass over kind of some of the other uh, instruments? Well, that's kind of a funny story. It was kind of it was kind of forced on me, but uh, I played guitar when yeah. I was younger, and uh, when it, before. I even got in bands or anything like that. Played guitar and piano when I was a kid. And, uh, my brother was a guitar player also, and he just loved it. Everything was loved guitar. And for me, guitar was, uh, it's okay. I like it. But uh, he loved it. I was going to let him have it. It was his thing. And yeah. One day I walked in him in his, his bedroom, and he's got a bass on the floor all in pieces. And he says, well, it's probably a good thing you walked in on me because you're a bass player, and there's a drummer on his way over, and you're in a band. <laughs> and so congratulations yeah the bass. so he'd we're been made. building me this bass in woodshop at school oh, and wow. he gave it to me as a gift and then uh after that i realized that i had always connected with the bass line of the song that was the part of the song that i was always singing in my head and it wasn't until i actually started playing it that i realized that was the part of music that really grabbed me and wow and, nice. and okay. so that, yeah, that kind of is where it all around. started yeah. yeah that's excellent well, that's cool. And then did you play like when where you played? Where, where were you? Where did you start out doing your gigs? And where where are you doing them now? So back then, uh, there's a lot of early on. It was mostly house parties, hall yeah. parties, stuff like that. Because we were too young to to play in bars. Um, then uh, later on, a lot of bar gigs and kind of in the '80s, kind of the same time grunge was going on. There was a real metal scene in the Seattle area as well. And uh, and we were part of that. My band at that time was called Jagged Dagger, and, and we sounded just like that sound. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that was uh, that was great, though. I was, uh, was in that for four or five years, and we had a little bit of stuff on the radio, and never got really popular outside of the city, but popular enough that it was. It was we could play it was around town time. and do yeah. some shows. Yeah, nice. mostly yeah. Seattle area. Uh, played. I moved out to the kent area uh later on and then met some people out this way and played in some bands that were a little more kind of groove oriented yeah less heavy stuff for a while and uh played in a a duo 20 years ago with a studio owner it was in covington who owned a studio there that i worked in a little bit and i think we even did a couple gigs out this way i was trying to remember when i was driving out here if i played out here but uh We've had a couple, a couple of music venues out here. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, a few venues out here. Yeah. I seem to recall playing in the, a, the Mint Steakhouse. Does that? Yeah. Oh, Mint, yeah. Is that still around? Yeah, the Mint is. It's. It's probably. I mean, it's probably been remodeled a, a it's little bit. It's definitely been remodeled. They don't really do bands anymore, but they did do bands at a, at one yeah. time. Right on. So yeah, yeah probably six years ago. Maybe so this would have been ago. like 20 years ago, but we yeah. opened for. Brandy Carlisle, when she was first getting started, she oh, recorded really? at the studio with the guy wow. that I played with, and so we came out and played here. So that was my Enum Club music story. <laughs> wow! But that's fun. It's neat to see where she's gone now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. In fact, uh, I didn't even realize that because I, I grew up in Ravensdale, and I, I mean, I knew she was kind of from this area, but I didn't know she was actually from Ravensdale. And I was like, whoa! It was like, like the only person who's ever who's ever made it out of Ravensdale. <laughs> You never hung out with her? <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't think I did. I don't, I mean, I mean, maybe, no, I don't remember it. I mean, I was out in the Selleck area, if you know where Selleck's at. So, not quite Ravensdale. But, uh, yeah. but 
he claims Ravensdale over Selleck. Well, that's, that, that, that one just tells you. That tells you something about Selleck. <laughs> that tells you about Selleck. <laughs> my mailing address. Um, oh, she's done pretty good for herself. So that's yeah, that's sure. pretty exciting. Yeah. And uh, all right, so then. Uh, so these days, uh, um, Author Unknown plays mostly Seattle, Pioneer Square, uh, Irish bars, that sort of thing. Although for the last year, we haven't. Right, really yeah, done first, anything. No, we did a couple. Uh, Except for practice, did a couple live shows with the <laughs> the original band. Um, live, uh, like online, Zoom type. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Facebook live. Facebook stuff. live yeah, type oh, things. Okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. That was kind of cool, just to get everybody together and play and for sure see our you know, friends, give them something to listen to. And yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and then, uh, well, let's let's dig in this up. Let's right dig in this next beer. It's beer time. Yeah. This uh, the first one's great, amazing. I, yeah, thank I you. I mean, sorry, I kind of bogarted a little <laughs> bit over here. On that, no, you're fine. You, you left the you left the bottle on my side. That's so fine. That, that he, works just fine. I'm he, fine with that. John brought uh, uh, 32 ounce, and I I think I drank like 18 ounces of it. And this is the hazy. <laughs> yeah. So this is get off my cloud, which is a hazy IPA. Figured I'd do this because nobody. Nobody drinks hazy IPA. Yeah, yeah, it's no, very rare. Heard of it. <laughs> very so weird. Yeah, it's, it's it's pronounced hazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that with an S or a Z. You know, if you if you ever been to New England, you'd be more familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, that's, really? That's, uh, that's all they drink over there. Oh, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, not actually. That's oh. <laughs> but that's actually well, that would be a New England style, not a hazy style. True. Get off my cloud. So this is one of my recipes in the store. It's kind of like our flagship. Hazy New England amazing. style oh IPA. Like open up that head. Oh gosh, that's mm. a great nose. Love that. What do we got? Some Centennial. Uh, it is uh, Zythos. What do we uh, Citra Mosaic and Eucanut. Oh, oh, I missed the Mosaic. It's primarily guess, about the Eucanut. Oh, it's primarily about Citra. Most yeah. hazies are. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of hops. I use cryo hops for as much as I can in it, which is. Uh, I don't know if you use cryo much there. It's, it's something that they do for the for the hop geeks who might be listening <laughs> to kind of get rid of some of the the leaf matter that's in the hops. So it's more just the lupulin glands where the oils are and stuff. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of hops in this beer, and so it kind of helps to reduce that hop matter that's in the fermenter and in the kettle. And so still want to keep all the the good part of the hops that we want. So this one is about six and a half percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's- Six point five. So most of the beers I make are on the lower side, just because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> More and I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. Sessionable. I'm. A, you've got a very calm demeanor about about you, which which is probably really good with instructing people and helping people and showing them how to brew and and where you don't freak out on them. I guess I'm just trying to picture you listening to Black Sabbath and Slayer <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Do you listen to and headbang <laughs> and headbang? Yeah, I just feel it's a like really slow. Head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just very like you're just very like uh, you're a pretty mellow guy. Yeah, I, I am. I just that kind of music just moved me. So that, that, and it still does. Yeah. I mean, if I actually a few years back played in a Black Sabbath tribute band for a while that was called Bastard of Reality, and so it was a really cool experience to go back and now thirty years later revisit this music that yeah. was such a huge influence on me. Now coming at it from a whole different place, yeah. and actually being able to really figure out the songs as opposed to back then where I just fumbled over it. Yeah. But it was definitely a different thing where I have a different. I, I am more peaceful guy right now. <coughs> not that I was ever not a peaceful guy, but <laughs> yeah, but it just seems uh, like. Uh, but so, but that was the thing that uh, got you moving. Yeah, yeah. And did you? Uh, what, what else? Uh, what other? You said art. You, you yeah. got you got your uh, major in major photography. in uh, photography. Right. Yeah. And I feel like as you've kind of were talking about when you, when you first started talking on this episode was about how you, you know you, you worked at uh, what store did you work at Larry's or what was what was the name Larry's well, was Larry's the, the brew supply but, <coughs> but he, he worked at a different music store. but then he worked so. at music stores yeah I worked prior um, to prior to that mm-hmm. so you so yeah. you under, you understand retail you understand yeah. sales yeah. you also understand probably like you're you're taking probably your own pictures for your for your website, and for your and advertising, yeah, stuff, yeah. and it, so, you've you've kind of got the whole thing. You even probably you even have your like you said, you have your music yeah, for your music Doesn't for your YouTube for videos. You're like a one man show. It does kind of a lot of oh, those things I'm do tie around. together. And, 
helps incredible. keep costs down too. Yeah. <laughs> so how? Okay. So I want to ask this question: While you are doing all this, how do you keep it where you're not absolutely obsessing over everything? Like, is it always on your mind, or are you? Have you learned to kind of like go? Like you already talked about, you're go with the flow kind of a yeah. guy and let things. You you have confidence when you move into something. Because you feel like you've been working towards it this whole time, you can see it in your head, but but yeah, how do you uh, how do you not get overwhelmed with everything? I'm not always real successful at not getting overwhelmed with it, <laughs> um, but at the same time, this is the reason I'm doing the reason I have a homebrew shop is because I love this stuff and I love helping other people get started doing it, and I love seeing other people be successful with it. So it's kind of my life, and so this is just would be what I was doing if I wasn't doing that. Yeah. So being having it be what I do all the time isn't that big a deal. It would be nice to shut it off and not sometimes wake up in the middle of the night, you know, working on my website or <laughs> well, like, helping a customer just, or something. Small, but, <laughs> small business owner, that's what we did, yeah. right? But that's the way it is, and it's all right. That's good. So, so it's, it's your passion. Absolutely, yeah. It, yeah. Would, it would be torture if it wasn't something that you liked. <laughs> that's probably true, but I wouldn't be doing it. Right, exactly. And, so exactly. That, and that's kind of lucky in that, you know, when I worked in music stores, I really liked that too. Being a musician, it was something that was passionate to me. But it was also very much of of work and trying to make sure I can make enough money to put my kids through school and, and buy a house and start getting retirement saved and stuff. And now when I kind of came to what's now my second career, it was more like, what do I love doing and yeah. how can I make this work i love yeah. this i love getting a little deep get a little deep with john right now do you feel like you've lived like seven different lives in a sense <laughs> through, sure. through where, where I mean, you musician like yeah. on the road yeah. like bouncing around like between, family man and, but like between 92 and 97 this was my, this was one life and 97 and like is, is that do you feel like that you look back again? yeah yeah there's definitely looking back there's there's definitely eras yeah i guess you could say yeah <laughs> What's your favorite one? The one you're in right now? Yeah, definitely where I'm in now. That's awesome. No question. Uh, yeah. It's nice to look back and know that uh, I didn't have leave some, anything on the table. And have back stories. Back in the days, yeah. yeah. Have the stories. Uh, so, but I'm also know that I couldn't I couldn't live like that now. That's <laughs> I don't, I, I'm the calm, peaceful guy. Now. <laughs> yes, yes. So, but yeah, I mean, life is great right now. I'm doing something I love. You know, I've got a good. Great wife, great house. My kids are are doing good and and all in good places in their lives, and, and that means a ton to me. For sure, yeah. Well, it's awesome. Actually, leads us into our shout outs. Believe it or not, shout outs. So we do shout outs at the end of every episode. Okay. Start talking about your wife and your kids. Yeah, probably a good thing to give a shout out about. Uh, do you want to do you want to talk about like shout them out the support the the friendship you have the relationships yeah, sure. all that. Uh, well. Huge shout out to my, my wife Sarah. Everything, everything that I do is is successful because of her and the support yeah. that I have, and, and, that, and that includes help, the store. And, and that helped getting you up here to talk with us too. I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, just ever since I first thought about doing a store, the support that I had, and she's also a huge part of running the store too. You know, she, you don't people don't see her on the out on the sales floor, but she does all the books and and all the stuff behind the scenes uh, that I. I either don't know how to do or can't do and just, but then also just the confidence in having somebody so supportive like that. That's, that's huge. Uh, I'd also have to give a shout out to my employees, Hutch and Kelly. It's, this is a unique area, people to get people to work. You got to have a unique skill set for sure. And yeah. uh, to have people be able to communicate and have the knowledge to communicate and like exactly, pass, yeah. pass down, like, you know, you got to be able to pass down that that knowledge that you have yeah 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 and they're both great responsible people and uh it's huge help to me having having hutch uh who was a professional brewer for a long time and then uh kelly who's actually a substitute school teacher so that she but she has time to be able to help out in the store along with what she does and she brings a unique set of knowledge to the store so that's cool it's it's that's awesome. So those yeah. are my shout outs. Awesome. <laughs> you got some shout outs coming up on the next episode too. So, okay, cool. So bank some of those. Sean, got any shout outs? Uh, I was going to throw out David Westby, um, Half Lion Brewing. Um, oh, yeah. Like you're good friends with him as well. Yeah. Um, lately, uh, you know, 2020, 
still filtering in 2021. Um, it's just great connections with small with uh, our smaller breweries, like uh, totally cross cross stuff. Like he came up and asked me for stuff, and I asked him. It's it's always nice having that like quick dial. Like, dude, I I I can't I can't do this without this. Can you help me out? And boom, always there. Yeah, love it. That's the great it. thing about this industry. Yeah, for sure. So half light and brewing in general, but David Westby. And obviously Adam Shea. I've Adam. Been, I've been great friends with Adam for a long time. But yeah, all of them. Love them. Nice. My shout out is going to go to Craig and Carrie uh, Bentley. And the reason I'm shouting them out, and he laughed about it because we do, we do, a, we're friends. And, and Craig, so I don't, you don't probably don't know I, this. I've known them longer. He's, he's known them way longer. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> the full body cast <laughs> is like, a bunch it's like an umbrella of multiple types of shows brew haha is every monday with sean and we talk you know we get beer nerdy and 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 we bring in other brewers bring in other people and we talk about it um but then throughout the week we have like random ones and thursdays i have one with a friend his name's uh, joey hollenbeck it's Holland with hollenbeck he used to play for wazoo football played fo- uh wazoo football and then also played for the hawks and, and a few and i think the bills st louis yeah Sorry, and the rams yeah and then on Friday we have Garage Night, and one of the hosts is Craig Bentley, his other and his brothers Corey Bentley, and it's the Garage Night. You sit around with your boys, drink some beers, and talk about the week, talk about sports, talk about whatever. And so we release those every Friday morning. So Craig, uh, if you know, I, I credit Edrid for like, hey, Eric Madrid saying, hey, you should go hit up anybody like in town and probably a brewery and probably someone that you may know. And I kind of knew Sean through Craig. And so Craig has been uh, a good support to not only the podcast, but also Cole street brewery and uh, just, a, yeah. just a fun guy, just yeah. a funny guy, fun guy, a chill guy. And, uh, and also carry his wife. Uh, they invited us over. They have a pool. At their house. Oh, so, what? You yeah. got to get in the pool? We haven't got there yet. Oh. We haven't oh, got there okay. yet. But this summer. Okay, I was going to say, you, you got in the pool before I got to yeah. get in the well, pool. Well, hey, you might as well jump in there tonight because. I, uh, I, I don't know. Like <laughs> last last week after we were playing, we, we played uh, our first uh, league game in softball was last Wednesday. And it was like the hottest day that we've had. It was so freaking hot. <laughs> and then the opera was on there like, oh, you can come over to the pool. Yeah. But then after playing, you're like. I'm so tired. If I go and jump in that, I'm not going to want to leave. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. In fact, though, Carrie, I think, revoked it halfway through where she said, hey, you and Jamie should come over and, and go uh, swimming with us. Maybe, maybe Jamie should That's come over. exactly how she did it. That's exactly how she did it. And she's got a little fan group. I didn't know. She, people kind of come up to her and have said or, or oh, yeah. and have said, Hey, you're, you're, are you the carry? And I will get messages. Even Big V, Veronica sent me a message about how we were talking about something. She's like, I want to buy Carrie this. And I don't think she's ever met Carrie before. So Carrie's becoming a, a little bit of a legend on, on here. So yeah, anyway, sweet girl. Yeah, really cool. So anyway, go down to Cole Street Brewery, go down to John's Homebrew and Wine Supply, follow Juwan, them Washington. on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Let's do Facebook. Facebook. I mean, okay. I'm Facebook on Instagram, sure. but, uh, but Facebook's kind of the... too old for Instagram, so I don't. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I'm the much. same way. So so go give them a like, and then what's the address? Uh, if or or anything, the website you said is is johnshomebrew.com. dot com, and then the and, John's J O N apostrophe S. Yeah, no H. Okay. <laughs> I, always, I always forget to point that out. Yeah. 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 Um, we're in the Puyallup Valley, uh, Main Street. Kind of runs from downtown Puyallup to Sumner. Yeah. We're just shy of halfway between the two. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So stop in. Uh, it, and if you listen to the podcast, you're going to do this. Mention that you listen to the podcast and and, uh, and just, you know, make them say, I heard your voice. You're a very calm guy. I don't understand the Slayer part, but I do understand that you're a calm guy. So anyway, thanks so much for listening. Have a great week, everyone. Take care. Right. Cheers. 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 Making your way in the world today. You really need a pod. Why don't you put your headphones in? And give this one a shot Wouldn't you like to just listen away And go to a place where everybody knows who you are Listen to two guys brew ha ha Cold Street Brewery and Full Buddy Cast Two of the greatest names 
Why don't you go and listen to this episode?